But first, Amazon is searching for a place to build a second headquarters. The scale of the project is massive. It comes with a proposed 8 million square foot campus that would cost $5 billion and promise up to 50,000 new jobs. As economics correspondent Paul Salman reports, that has created an unprecedented bidding war between cities and states. It's part of his weekly series, Making Sense, which airs every Thursday. Hey Alexa, where should Amazon locate HQ2? Hmm, in Frisco, Texas. City officials across North America have come up with quirky. Frisco is a city that thinks outside the box. Some might say desperate ways of getting the attention of Amazon, the country's fourth largest company. Birmingham, Alabama boosters build giant delivery boxes around the city. Southern Arizona promoters sent the company a cactus. While other places touted traits they're not usually known for. Las Vegas is well positioned to be a catalyst for the most advanced smart city technology in America. Dallas's pitch, livability. Flavor. Vibe. Margaritas. Culture. Because it's great for kids, it's great for your home. Detroit's case, make a difference. Move here, move the world. 238 cities and regions are bidding for what's being called Amazon HQ2. The company looking for assets like the tech talent that drew it to Seattle, thanks to Microsoft. So no surprise that's part of Will Reynolds' pitch. Great university system, great group of millennials, um, which is a growing population here, great arts and culture, affordable. Reynolds founded an internet marketing firm in 2002. Not much tech where he was back then. Today, people have tons of options if they want to work in the tech industry. And that's just been in the last 10 years. The hot tech hub Reynolds is pushing? Philadelphia, which is even branded North Third Street, where Reynolds founded his company, Nerd Street. I think the biggest thing that Philly has over most other cities is our diversity. It's really big right now for Silicon Valley and, and, and tech startups to be focusing more on what they're doing in the community and how their teams are becoming more diverse. But Philadelphia already is, and that's a huge plus, says Reynolds. You got blacks, whites, rich and poor. Amazon sells stuff to all kinds of people. A diverse customer base is best served, according to Reynolds, by a diverse workforce. But wait, Amazon has also made it clear it wants downtown real estate, easy access to public transportation. Called the L, it's an elevated line that comes out of ground. Your prayers are answered, says the city's professional booster. We are on Market Street, Market West, 30th Street station right here. It's the third busiest rail station in the Amtrak system. It's adjacent to bus terminal, uh, trolley stop, and just behind this is University City. As head of select Greater Philadelphia, it's Matt Cabry's job to hawk the city of brotherly love which is why he's pushing the 14-acre Schuylkill Yards, supposedly primed for Amazon. Everything from the size of population to the transportation infrastructure and the mass transit, this particular site fits perfectly. So perfect for Amazon, he claims, and of course, not too bad for Philadelphia. Is this the biggest such project ever? We have not been able to find another project that comes near it. Site selection consultant Jay Biggins, whose own company is based in New Jersey, says the economic benefits Amazon would bring to Philadelphia are ginormous. You have five billion of payroll that's dropping into your market now that wasn't there before. You're creating contractor opportunities, the coffee shop and the hair salon, and millions of others that are all generating more activity themselves. They're all spending more because they're making more. Detroit is the study line. The benefits are why 238 bidders are in the game. But in any transaction, there are also the costs. Forever bidding against each other for new business, cities and states dangle not just prime real estate, but money, mainly tax breaks. Case in point, outgoing New Jersey Governor Chris Christie's Newark bid. All of the economic incentives put together from the city and the state would realize $7 billion in potential credits against Amazon's state and city taxes. So and what's the cost-benefit bottom line? These tax incentives are not good for taxpayers. Brookings scholar Amy Liu studies regional economic development. The bulk of job creation in a state and city comes not from business attraction deals. They only make up 3% of all the jobs created in a community. Real job creation comes from entrepreneurship, startups, 
helping scale new firms and helping existing companies grow. Lou argues that investments in affordable housing, infrastructure, and education would do a local economy more good than tax lures. It creates a perverse incentive of doing the wrong thing. There's really nothing at all perverse about that. We revere competition in all other aspects of American economic life. In fact, we insist on it as a matter of law. The only way to really think about incentives in this context is that it's a pricing tool. So how much are up to 50,000 jobs worth? Philly's tax bid, a reported three billion. Now a city like Albuquerque can't offer much money, so outgoing Mayor Richard Berry makes a different argument. We're not gonna buy your love, but we're gonna earn your business. And we think that we have a lot of things to offer Jeff Bezos, who was actually born here. So what's your pitch? You can succeed here, Jeff. You were born here, come home. Actually, Philadelphia nurses similar dreams. One of the things that's often under-recognized is it's not just the city where it's located, or it's not just the town or the office park. It's where the CEO and where the C-suite want to live. Well, Jeff Bezos has a connection to Washington, D.C., owns the Washington Post, has a house down there, right? He does, and he's a Princeton grad, and he has other family connections in the greater Philadelphia region. So those kinds of factors may actually uh, be part of this decision-making. And then there's Little Rock, Arkansas. Amazon, you have got so much going for you, and you'll find what you're looking for, but it's just not us. Mayor Mark Stadola published an open letter in the Washington Post saying Little Rock was not bidding because 50,000 Amazon workers, quote, would be a bummer. That ease of getting around would be totally wrecked. We're great, but I don't think we were meant to be together this time around, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna kiss you goodbye before you kiss us goodbye. And Will Reynolds admits there will be drawbacks if his city wins. I'm going to have more competition. And they're going to compete for talent. Absolutely. And they're going to drive up prices of houses like you. Absolutely. If you look at the Capitol Hill neighborhood of uh, Seattle, where one of my really good friends lives, he can barely afford to live there now. So there's definitely some negative spillover. But I think the positives outweigh the negatives so much in terms of what it would do for the city and for the kids of our city. I'm willing to take the fact that my job might be a little bit harder uh, for what's good for the whole city. And to me, it's the whole city. OK, but what are this whole city's chances? Back at Schuylkill Yards, I asked Matt Cabry. The odds for Greater Philadelphia getting the Amazon HQ2 project is 80%, in my, my opinion. 80%? 80%. That would make you a prohibitive favorite. Absolutely, yeah. We're a perfect fit for this project on several levels. Now, if it weren't both unseemly and illegal, I would have offered a bet on the spot. Ireland's gambling website, Paddy Power, has Philadelphia in ninth place at 16 to 1, a less than 6% chance. Even the betting public's favorite, Atlanta, is 3 to 1 against, a 25% chance. But even if the city is among the 237 losers, consoles skeptical scholar Amy Liu, I do think there's a silver lining in this bid for Amazon headquarter too. And that is that Amazon essentially gave a playbook to every single city about what matters in this digital economy. To survive and prosper with or without seducing the biggest prospective catch in corporate history. This is economics correspondent Paul Salman reporting from ever-loving Philadelphia.